This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Billy here, and the Mini 3 Pro is the first mini drone made by DJI that features intelligent flight modes, and it's all thanks to the tri-directional obstacle avoidance system. So, we've got a set of sensors on the front, a set of sensors on the bottom, and another set of sensors located on the front, but that point backwards. So, now that this drone can see in three different directions, it can also fly itself. So with that said, what I wanna do in today's video is go over how to use these intelligent flight features so that you can make the most of them on your Mini 3 Pro. So the flight modes that are now available on the Mini 3 Pro are focus track, so that's active track, point of interest, and spotlight, as well as some camera specific flight modes like hyperlapse, master shots, and quick shots. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on the focus track suite of flight modes, which in my opinion are more powerful, and in our next video, we'll follow up with the others. So by far the most frequently asked question that I've received on videos pertaining to the Mavic Mini 1 and the Mini 2 is why can't this drone follow me? Why does it not have active track built in? Even though active track, I think, dates back to like the Phantom 3. That's when we first saw it built into DJI's drones. And it all came down to the fact that those drones did not have obstacle avoidance sensors. So therefore, if you had the drone following you, it was at a much greater risk of crashing because it couldn't see. Now, I think that Active Track will be one of the most used flight modes here on the Mini 3. And just a few weeks ago, I uploaded a video of an entire flight where I had the drone follow me without crashing once. It was like 15 minutes of straight autonomous flight. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the top right corner and in the playlist link in the description so that you can get a good understanding of how this drone fares when left to fly entirely on its own. Now, getting into how we actually use Active Track, the way that we enable it is very simple. Right from the live feed on our screen, we drag our finger over the sub that we want to track, creating a green box. This pulls up our list of focus track flight modes with active track sitting on the left side. The drone will stay stationary until we make our selection and then hit go. Once enabled, the drone begins flying on its own, keeping the subject in the frame and making adjustments to dodge obstacles as you move. Coming up here is a small obstacle that the Mini 3 Pro tackles effortlessly, and I have to say, active track as a whole and all of DJI's drones has really come a long way to the point where I trust it in almost any situation. Now, by default, the drone is set to the trace active track shooting mode, which will follow the subject that you've selected from behind at all times. But if you want to switch things up and record from a different angle, you can choose the parallel shooting mode and move the drone to say the side of your subject that you are tracking. You just have to be really careful with this because the Mini 3 does not have any sensors on the side of the drone. In fact, obstacle avoidance is totally turned off when flying in the trace flight mode. Therefore, tracking something from a different angle while the drone is flying sideways puts it at a higher risk of crashing. It's pretty cool though, how you can snap between the trace and parallel shooting mode as needed, and the drone effortlessly makes the change. I would just recommend reserving that parallel flight mode for times when you're out in the open, say on a beach or in a field. An area like this that I'm riding in would be a bad idea to fly in parallel without constantly watching the drone to make sure that it doesn't crash. As a pro tip to dive a little bit deeper into using Active Track, you can also use your remote controller to change the position that the drone follows you from. So right after I begin my Active Track flight, I typically adjust my drone's height, distance, and and gimbal pitch accordingly, and then as I go about what I'm doing, the drone will keep that position as best it can, of course, making adjustments as it needs to for any obstacles that are in the way. I always like to make sure that I keep my remote handy while using Active Track so that I can continue to make adjustments during my flight as necessary. You, of course, can also move the drone all around you when using the parallel shooting mode. You're not just locked into like changing your distance, height, and gimbal pitch, but remember, those sensors are turned off, so be careful. As another tip, with the most recent update that DJI released for the Mini 3 Pro, you can now use Active Track track when you rotate the camera of the drone vertically. So if you wanted to shoot some portrait content for say Instagram reels or TikTok, you can do so while the drone tracks you during active track. Once you're all done and want to move on to another flight mode, you can hit stop at the bottom of the screen and the drone will come to a stop and hover in place. The next option that makes up our focus track suite of flight features here on the Mini 3 Pro makes capturing videos with your drone really easy. So to get things started here, just like with Active Track, we'll drag our finger over the subject that we want to track, which then stays highlighted in a green box. From here, the drone takes over the camera controls entirely from the pitch of the camera to the rotation of the actual drone itself. So with my subject being my car here, as I move forwards and backwards, the drone is automatically moving the camera and rotating the drone itself to keep me in frame. Now in a real world use case scenario, Spotlight is really useful when tracking a moving subject because it takes away a lot of the finite movements and finesse that you need to have when filming. All you have to do is position the drone using the two control sticks and you can totally leave your finger off of the gimbal wheel and you don't have to worry about rotating the drone. Just change your altitude and move the drone in space and the drone itself will handle the rest for you. 
Now, Spotlight doesn't end there with a moving subject. It works just as well on a static subject like a building, for example. All you need to do is highlight your subject and move the drone around. The camera movement and aircraft rotation, as always, is handled by the drone thanks to Spotlight, and it makes capturing dynamic video with multiple levels of movement like a reveal shot really, really easy. To go a little bit deeper, you also aren't locked into just keeping your subject right in the middle of the frame. After the drone has determined what it is that you want to capture and the icon switches to that smaller square, you can rotate your drone and pitch the gimbal to place the subject in any part of the frame that you want. Just with this simple flight around this water tower, I managed to move the camera into four different positions that would look good. I could show the horizon, I could cut out the sky, I can really customize this shot any way that I want. This spotlight feature is really powerful. I figured I would also mention that just like Active Track, Spotlight works in the vertical shooting mode, so you can rotate that entire camera and chase after subjects in a portrait aspect ratio, which is a really unique experience. Now, before we move into our final focus track flight mode, which is point of interest, I want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a platform that I've personally been using before I even started posting videos to my YouTube channel here six years ago. I first built my portfolio using Squarespace's platform because of their templates that are stylish, functional, and easy to customize. I didn't need to learn how to code, I didn't need any previous experience, and I didn't need to spend a ridiculous amount of money to hire someone to build it from scratch. Instead, I was able to work at my own pace, I could add my best photographs that I've taken from my hard drive to my website, and I was able to customize my template entirely exactly the way that I wanted. In my case, I have a simple design with a black background and minimal text to keep the focus on the images. Squarespace goes even deeper with detailed analytics so that I can see who is looking at my website, they have integrated SEO tools so that I can get my work seen by more people online, and if I choose to do so, I could start an online store right within Squarespace's platform to sell prints, presets, or anything else photography related. So a special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and helping me display my work online for over half a decade. Okay, now moving into our final flight mode that makes up focus track, we've got point of interest that allows you to automate one of the most popular drone shots, and that is the orbit. Just like all of the other focus track flight modes, we begin by dragging our finger to make a box over the subject that we want to orbit. We then have the option to select our direction and speed using the directional arrows above our focus track selection menu. Once you're ready, tap on go and the drone will be on its way. No matter the speed you choose, the drone will initially fly a little bit slower to analyze the scene so that it can properly determine how to orbit your selected subject. During the POI flight mode, just like active track, you can alter your height and distance from the subject that you've selected with the control sticks on your remote. You can also adjust your speed and the overall direction at any time during your flight. So you can speed the drone up, slow it down, or straight up go the opposite direction at any time. Much like Spotlight, the drone will automatically adjust the pitch of your gimbal to keep the camera focused on your subject. So while POI is a heavily automated flight mode, you can make your shot a little bit more dynamic by, say, increasing your altitude. So flying the drone upwards as it orbits rather than just capturing a standard orbit on the same plane. Now, of course, I have to mention, just like all the other focus track flight modes, you can use POI in the vertical shooting mode to capture portrait orbit shots if that's the aspect ratio that you want to capture your video in. Now, before we wrap this video up, there is one more thing I want to mention that's going to make using these focus track flight modes a whole lot easier. It's called subject scanning and can be found by tapping under the three dots in the top right corner, going to control, and then toggling subject scanning on. You'll know that this mode is turned on by the radar indicator that appears in the top right corner from your main flight screen. Now, right away, you might be able to tell what subject scanning does. It will automatically find subjects in your frame that you may want to track from people to cars. This makes it really easy to tap on the plus icon and then go on with whichever flight mode it is that you want to use. And so there we have it. That wraps up our walkthrough of the different intelligent flight modes that make up focus track. In my opinion, active track is probably my favorite. I have been using it nonstop on my one wheel and on my boosted board. It really is powerful and I've become so comfortable flying with it and I know that it's not going to crash that I just ride along and don't even turn around because I know that the drone is always going to be there. I also think that spotlight is really powerful if you can use it properly because you can really run and gun using that and get nice shots without needing to have a whole lot of finesse on the sticks. And POI is also, I would say, pretty powerful. I mean, if you kind of add in those different height elevations as you rotate and orbit around a subject, you can get some really dynamic shots. But again, I still think that Active Track is my favorite because it's just the most fun. Anyway, if you've tried any of these Focus Track flight modes on any of your drones, whether it be the Mavic 3, the Mini 3, the Air 2S, any of those drones, Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.